So we just showed that we created the job server uh, with one single command and everything's working fine. We completed our task and, and it's working. But it could be the case where this job server for any reason um, has issues and we need actually to remove it and recreate it. That is quite uh, a nightmare for, for, the, for the users usually because you need absolutely to remove the job server, reconfigure, re look again at everything and retry it. But we are in the container world, so it's that pretty simple. So we got right now our uh, job server that is running fine. Well, let's just do a, a first simulation quite easily. Uh, so the idea is that, oops, just to absolutely to stop it and remove it. So we will remove the, the job server, so it's not there anymore. And that, and that could be absolutely tested because as you can see, that's, it took an error at the end because it was just stopped. But if I try to, re to refresh this page, nothing is there anymore. So that's a big issue. We don't have the job server. We need to recreate it pretty easily. So in the end, it's just a question of giving back the same command as we did before. The command will take exactly the same secrets that are in memory, so they are not they are there, they are not being cancelled. And this means that in a few seconds we will be in a position to run again the, the container and and the job server is coming and exactly as before is start again from where it ended up last time uh, three seconds and then it's back to normal. Um, let's try another scenario just to typical troubleshooting. Um, that it could be really useful. So let's stop again our container. Oops, sorry. Let's stop our container. Let's remove it again. And let's start again this container. And this time, let's say that we just run the container in the wrong mode. We forget actually to expose the port. So what will happen is that the container itself, it will run because underline the if the container is able to communicate with the SQL server, then it will do its job. Obviously, we are not exposing the web port we are using to monitor the container. Mm -hmm. This means that if I come here and I try to refresh this page, that page is not responding anymore, but not because the container itself is not working, but simply because we forget to, to expose the port. Um, so there's no proper way actually to fix that on an active container. So we need absolutely to stop, remove this container, restart it with the proper command. But as you can see, the container itself is working. And as a further information, if I come on the job service, I will see that actually that the job service is still working, is still logging information there. Um, there's an easy way eventually to get in the container, see actually if everything is working, that actually is executing inside the container. But in our case, obviously, if we need that web page exposed, um, then we would need to actually absolutely to stop the container, um, remove it and map it in the proper way. So we stop it. And we remove it. And finally, last things. Our container start again. So when we do Docker inspect and we ask for a specific container, that's why we say that it's really useful to use secrets. What we expect to see is the variables used by the container at the runtime. This gives us all the information around the container. So if you have a variable exposed 
without the secrets. You should see the variables data here. But as you can see, our enter are completely empty. And this means that basically uh, you're pretty secure that whoever can connect to this container for any reason cannot see your sensitive data in that container. So you're pretty secure. And with that, basically, it concludes our uh, little demo on how to run a doc job service in containers uh, without um, with easy with easy steps.